For so many of us, Bond is a British institution, one of our greatest cultural exports to the world. But in 2021, not everyone looks upon the super spy and his extreme macho behaviour so favourably. Last week, Sean Connery's version of Bond was called basically a rapist by No Time to Die director Carrie Fukunaga, while newest Bond girl Lashana Lynch has praised the character for moving away from the toxic masculinity, her words, of yesteryear. But do we need to encourage the sensitive men of today to be more like the Bond of old? unashamedly macho with traditional values. Well, to debate this and the whole concept of if we need more strong men in society, I'm joined by Emma Webb from the Free Speech Union, who says society could do with more macho blokes. But comedian and political activist Kate Smirthwaite says excessive male pride risks creating a culture of sexist and intimidating bully boys. Kate, isn't James Bond exactly the type of British bloke we want? I mean, we've just established that in the early days he was basically a rapist, so I think definitely we could do with a fair bit less of that. And sure, they've updated him, but ultimately, I mean, he wins his battles by fighting, by using violence. Is that how we want to live in 2021? It's not doing much for me, to be honest. I think, I think if anything, we should be past that, shouldn't we? I mean, I mean, really, this is the way we solve problems in Britain. A minute ago, you were saying that sitting in a motorway was terrorism, and now you're telling me that beating people up is what we need more of. I don't know what side you're on, but I'm on the side of let's live peacefully and respectfully and sort out the environment and make the planet a better place for everyone and maybe have more equality between the sexes and less violence violence against women. What's so difficult about that? Well, I don't think Bond is violent against women. He's violent. He's, his, his job is to be violent. That's what he does for a living, is he beats up the baddies. And he's a character. Well, sure, but, like, that's like... Like, you just said, do we need more of them? I mean, do you mean in fiction? I mean, no, I love I a mean fun fictional life. character, but you must be meaning in our society. And if you do, then the answer is thanks, Dan, but no. Also, no more Rambos, no more, you know, whatever. No more Stalins, Saddam Husseins, Pol Pots, whatever. We don't need horrendous characters who are going to be violent. We need to live in a civilised and respectful culture. Emma Webb, how, how do you feel about, about this? Do, do you think, actually that Bond's toxic masculinity can be a good thing? Well, I don't think this is about, as you mentioned, you know, having more macho men. It's not about having macho men. Mm. It's about having strong men. Society doesn't need weak men in the same way that society doesn't need weak women. Society needs more strong people in it, and I think that's the point. That You know, we hear a lot about toxic masculinity, and it's almost pathologising masculine traits, things that I think are a virtue, like the American Psychological Association 2019 uh, gave a list of things that they said were harmful masculine traits like stoicism or um, competitiveness. These are things that society need to thrive. Uh, weak men are the sorts of people that you see, as we did recently in Portsmouth, within the incel community. Those are weak men. That is what the but consequences of being a weak man lead to. What we need is more strong men who are emotionally resilient. Stoicism, I think, is a, is a trait that we need more of in society. We need more strong men and more strong women, and I don't see how that is even possible to argue against. I'm not sure how you can muddle up somebody in Portsmouth who is violent and say we need less weak people like that. So we lead, need less weak people who are violent and cause harm to others and more strong people who are less violent. And, and I mean, so that, that doesn't make any sense. But also, this idea that what we need is stoicism. Stoicism is exactly that thing where you don't talk about what's going on, you don't talk about your feelings, you bottle them up and it comes out as violence, it comes out as self-harm, it comes out in the high suicide rates that we see among young men. The last thing that we need is telling people, bottle up your feelings. And indeed, I'm all for competition if you want to be an Olympic athlete or if you want to, you know, go into business and take on your rivals. But I think pushing competition in and of itself as a good thing, it's not useful because it's, competition means we have winners and therefore, by definition, we must have losers and some people are good enough and some people aren't. Why don't we build a culture where you don't have to be a winner? Everybody can work hard and do well, do not only really one want, winner. Kate, Surely that's better. Do you really want every man to feel like they have to share 
all of their emotions that they have no. to cry in public. Isn't there no, a great thing about that sort of stoic character? People can share the feelings that they want to feel. Like Prince Philip, who dealt with a lot, but actually in public dealt with a lot of what? Ski trips. It sounds like it sounds what? like you've never read any stoic philosophy because <laughs> we, we live. Okay, ha ha ha. We live in an emotional Gosh, continent. What a, what, a, what, a, what a jab! No. Eh? I've never read any stoic philosophy. Well, you're, you're Stand aside. I shall show you some Proust. What a, what what ho? What a your, joy debate your, we shall have. Your straw manning stoicism. The, uh, in fact, stoicism is the basis of cognitive behavioural therapy. No, so the Dan idea is saying men should talk about every single feeling they ever had, and you're saying, no, 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 stoicism is good, people shouldn't talk about their feelings, and I'm saying maybe we should create a society no, that's where not you what can if you want that's to. That's not what I'm what saying. saying. What sort of stoicism I'm are you recommending? Stoicism is the basis of cognitive behavioural therapy because it helps people to become more emotionally res resilient and able to deal with the sorts of things that life inevitably throws at them. The reason why I say that incels are weak men is because they're men who are not able to deal with the things that life throw at them, then throws at them. They're not able to be emotionally resilient. They're not able to have the strength to have control over their impulses and to just man up and get on with things rather than sort of sort of marinating themselves. To in be this honest, Emma, I think you're just disingenuously it's not changing the definition of strong. I'm saying we don't need strong macho men because we don't need more violence, we don't need more aggression, we don't need any of that stuff. And you're saying, well, really strong men would be able to suppress their own um, violence and, and, and a aggression. Lot of people here well, on five. you know, okay. Then in which case we wholly agree the debate is over, right? Because we agree that men should be strong enough and powerful enough to not express their anger through violence or lashing out or causing problems. So, Kate, like, do you great. Like to go. see this moment of Daniel Craig crying behind the scenes, does that make you feel like he's more of the type of man that would be good for society in your ideal world? I don't... I mean, to, to say, oh, I love watching Daniel Craig cry would be a weird thing to say. Um, you know, I get my kicks my own way, thanks, Dan. But um, I think it's important that young men are taught that it's OK to... If you want to express your emotions, then it's OK not to. You don't have to say things out loud if you don't want to, but it's, it's OK to do so. Because I don't think that we be benefit... Strong, more strong women, don't you, Kate? Like... Like, I think there are loads of strong women out there already. I don't think that we... I don't think that we... Sh I don't think this idea that we should go out and try to make everybody stronger because the world is so awful and brutal. I think we should go out and make the world less awful and brutal so that those people who are sensitive and delicate and emotionally fragile are also able to flourish so in our society because what's wrong with that? What's wrong with being emotionally open? Isn't that a lovely thing to be in? Doesn't that help us build a wonderful, caring, beautiful Emma? society? rather than going, let everyone toughen up because everyone else has, and if they're tough and you're tough, I better be tough as well. I mean, do we want a massive brawl or do we just want a better, more Emma respectful I don't society? Think, I don't think you can have a good, stable, peaceful society without people who have their own house in order and who are able to control their own emotions and their own behaviour. And I think for that, both men but and women, you that... need some kind of emotional resilience and strength. And I think you're that... You're arguing a completely different thing to what we're talking... You're talking about a completely different thing to what Dan introduced. No, and not what at all. I've been talking about. Not at all. He was literally talking about machismo, and now you're saying that strong people are able to suppress their emotions and not lash out. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think we should all try to, you know, suppress any tendencies we have towards violence and lashing out. And if that's your definition of strength, then yes, I'm with Emma. More strong people. Hurrah. But, Kate, you're very offended by a term... I'm not like offended at man. all. I haven't used the word offended. Uh, what do you say I'm offended by, Dan? I'm curious. When I use the term, like, man up. Am you I? need to man up. When, when I, when, I, mean, I mean, it's not that a term I would you, choose doesn't to... doesn't it? It's not a term I would choose to use. I wouldn't say I was offended, Dan. I mean, you really have to try a bit harder than that, you know? Perhaps I'm one of these emotionally resilient people that Emma is so keen I'm on. I'm proud of you. I indeed, like it. Because, indeed, yeah, I mean... I mean, if you, I don't think that we should use that kind of language, for example, with children... Because I think that if we send a message that men are not supposed to are supposed to act in a certain way, then we're, t we're, we're restricting young men in terms of the range of ways in which they feel they can act. And I don't think any of us should feel like we're only allowed to but act isn't the reality, in a certain way. Isn't the reality that you think any form of masculinity is toxic? Oh, do Whereas I? Emma is saying, oh. ac actually... How fascinating. Perhaps you'd like to argue the case with Emma. I haven't said that. I mean, I, I okay, wonder well, what it is... do you think there's some form of masculinity that isn't toxic? 
but of course it's absolutely fine to be a guy and to be proud of being a guy and to feel that you have some role as a guy and I think it's absolutely up to individual guys to choose what role that might be and if they say well I'm a guy and for that reason I want to be caring towards my family or I'm a guy and for that reason I want to be somebody who fights for something or I'm a guy and I want to be someone who achieves something or pushes for something I think all of that I mean but at the same time I also think that women might have those ambitions and actually might see them as feminine or I'm a woman and I want to care about my family and maybe I see that as feminine or maybe I just see it as a thing that you I want to be in very much the same way Feminism, do you? But, um, but you yes, you do. I get. Oh my goodness! Read my Twitter feed. It's t loaded with people accusing me of toxic feminism. I barely have to sneeze or get out of bed in the morning before yeah, I'm. But accused I'm saying of such you things. don't believe in it. What do, what do you mean? I don't believe in it. Well, you don't think that that exists, whereas you do. I, think, I think I think there are. I think I think there are women who are a problem in our society. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to point at Emma, but you know, there are women in our society who I don't think are completely on the side of truth and justice. Why and is everything. Emma a problem? <laughs> Um, but I just disagree with what she said, don't I? So I don't think she's helping fight towards a more equal, fairer, more caring, okay, giving, generous give and balanced to society. Um, she Emma, she may disagree. She, I thought she was for stoicism, to. but now perhaps she's for a caring, sharing okay, well, group Emma hug respond. where we all well, think and buy You've thrown a lot of accusations there, so let Emma respond. <laughs> I think... Accusations. I, I think that stoicism and being strong is the way that we create a stable and peaceful society. So I think a lot of the things that I actually agree with you when you say, you know, men about caring for their families and so on, those, I think those are traditional masculine traits. I think that a lot of, lot of the things that have been literally pathologised in, when talking about toxic masculinity are things that are quite literally masculine virtues they are good things and anything in excess of course can become a vice but i think that that is the way that you do create good society by having good strong healthy individuals who take responsibility from themselves i return to the point of incels because i think that is a good example of what happens when men f are in in behaving in a way that is is weak and lacks emotional resilience and so i think that it's good you wouldn't want to be you know i don't think in a that if you please let me finish you wouldn't want to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't have control over their emotions or impulses you wouldn't want to work with somebody who isn't competitive who isn't able to sort of tussle with you you know these are all good good positive things and I think the problem here is that negative traits in general things that are bad are just simply being associated and pinned on masculinity when actually masculinity isn't the problem masculinity is a good thing femininity okay. is a good thing but it's point. not inherently toxic and we shouldn't be pathologizing it. Kate Smith, wait, final question to you. Mm. Uh, do you think society would be better off if James Bond, the character, no longer existed? Yeah, I think it would. I mean, not, but not that it's about how society would be, but I think James Bond is done. Like, we've spent so much time and energy trying to take a character that we all accept was problematic in the early days and kind of tidy it up and clean around the edges. And I think, why bother? You know, there are some very talented writers writing for that show. Let's give them a blank sheet of paper and let them write something completely new that doesn't take a toxic story and clean it up, that just writes something. You know, Phoebe Waller-Bridge writes for James Bond these days, and I love her output. Why, can't, why have we got to drag her into tidying up a character that, by all admissions, used to be a rapist? And, well, that was and, her and choice. Then, that and, was her choice, and I'm sure no. as a fellow feminist, you support that choice. Kate Smirthway, the no. comedian well, and actress. Well, you can't Thank just say you so can't just much. make things up and conclude that that was my point. That was not my point. My point Sticks was that I would like her to write something on a blank sheet of paper and be given yeah, the sort of funding. She's doing but that. Would she be she's given doing the that sort? But she also but would she be to given the bond. sort of funding to promote the film and to promote her, her name that she would if she writes for James Bond? And the answer is no, not at the moment. And that's how I would like our society to change to create the opportunity for her and for people like her. Okay. rather than making yet another Bond okay. film about but, this but guy I who used to be a rapist. To Kate but... Smirthwaite, the activist and comedian, and <laughs> Emma Webb from the Free Speech Union, thank you so much. A brilliant, fiery clash. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.